every NBA season has its share of disappointments. And we talked about our surprises in a prior video. Go ahead and check that one out too. But today, let's talk about some of the teams and or players who have not played up to our expectations. I'm going to have to start off with the Chicago Bulls. I'm sorry, Chicago Bulls have been a disappointment for me so far this season. They are hovering, hovering, trying to get into the playing tournament. The playing tournament? When last season with this very same roster, they were, what, top six? And now they can barely make it to the playing tournament? DeMar DeRozan, what more can he do, right? Zach Levine, when he's ready, he is in it. I just need for Zach Levine to be more consistent, and maybe we'll see that as the season progresses. But I don't know if they have enough on the bench. So I just don't know if this roster for the Chicago Bulls is really going to be enough to even make it to uh, the playoffs this season. And that's really sad. And I'm sorry, we're still waiting on Lonzo. Like, y'all. So Chicago Bulls, for me, I was waiting. I would at least hope that they would at least maintain a top six spot. And if anything, because of the injuries that they've, you know, been dealing with, which every team has been dealing with, right, at least in the playing tournament between seven and ten, but y'all hovering outside of it, I'm done. Yeah, so the Chicago Bulls right now, for me, are a disappointment. Big time disappointment. But they're not on my list. I'm actually disappointed in Ben Simmons of the Brooklyn Nets. You know, Ben is my guy, and I have championed him in years past. But let me tell you, Ben Simmons is making $35 million this season, and he is a shell of himself. Yeah. He's got to be aggressive and assertive, especially with Kevin Durant out. Yep. I thought he would have learned from his experience playing, from the Philly, playing with the Philadelphia 76ers in terms of passing up shots. Now, Ben is going to get you an assist. You know, he can control the tempo and pace of the game. But he's making history for all the wrong reasons. 13 assists, zero points. Not even looking for a shot. Not even pretending that he's going to shoot the basketball. I'm looking for Ben Simmons to start slashing and cutting, maybe a little floater to score a bucket or two. He has to, especially with Kevin Durant out. The Nets will not, even with KD and Kyrie, they will not go deep without a healthy, assertive, aggressive Ben Simmons. You know what, though? And I agree. If he is concerned about shooting jumpers, don't. Can I get your layup game solid? As you mentioned, can you get a nice floater? But let's start baby steps. Just do a layup. Can you do that? Because you can. Oh, you can get to the basket. But what yeah. do you do? Pass it out. Pass it out. You 6'10". Can I get a dunk? Like, come on, Ben. And if he knows it too. He, he talked it. about it. I need, yeah. I need to stop. I need to stop passing the ball. Well, then stop passing the ball. Stop doing it. Please. One of the ben. one of their recent losses, I uh, forget who it was against. The difference maker could have been Ben Simmons that he had just put up 10. Like, mm -hmm. I, can you just do seven? Can I get you seven points? But you'll attempt three shots, but you don't get one. Yeah. So unlike other players who get high assists, i.e. Tyrese Halliburton, he can at least put the ball in the basket too. So I'm going to need for Ben Simmons to do that. Yeah, it is It is a little disappointment. And how much longer will we have to listen to that song and dance where we're saying, okay, enough is enough? Are we at enough is enough for Ben Simmons right now? I'm still holding on strong. You still give him grace. I got I'm disappointed. In the, I mean, we're at the midway part of the yeah. season. And, yeah. and I think now's a good time for him to click it on, especially with KD being out. I mean, yeah, Royce O'Neal is only going to give you so much. You know, Seth Curry and Jacques Vaughn is like really pulling for Ben Simmons to be productive out there on the court, and not just with assists, but you got to put the ball in the basket. I don't care how you look at it. Yeah, how you? I don't care how you look at it. Fun, first, first rule is put the ball in the basket. Never bas basketball is all about, <laughs> right? And then the assists, that stuff is also important, but you got to be able to put the ball in the basket. I agree. You know, I don't have him on my list, nor do I have the Nets, but I do have the Atlanta Hawks. I'm sorry. I think that the rift between Trey Young and Nate McMillan is hindering the squad from moving forward this season. It's huge. It's a huge rift. It's it's one of those things that I think is showing up in how Trey plays the game because he doesn't look the same. I mean, if you look at his, if you check the eye test, he looks like he's just like uh, out of whack. Mm -hmm. If you look at the box score year over year, He's dropped down like so I just and then what makes me really 
sad about it is that Jazante Murray was supposed to come in and help elevate the Atlanta Hawks. But because of the rift between, and I still believe it is a rift between Trey Young and Mc McMillan, it has actually brought the Atlanta Hawks down. I just don't think they have enough, and their their franchise player is clearly unhappy because it is manifesting itself in how he plays the game, in how his body language appears when he is on the floor. It just doesn't, it just doesn't look right, and is causing the Hawks. I'm looking for the Hawks of 2021. Where are they at? And then you have this Dijon on the roster, and y'all can't even be – it's 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 just done. And so I just think they need to just start from scratch. They probably need to have a come-to a come to meeting where they air it all out, agree to leave it in the room, and go on out there and play. But until that happens or until one of them leaves, the Hawks for me is a disappointment this season. Yes, but the thing is, they will not leave it in the room because the fact that we know about the rift between True. Nate McMillan and Trey is proof of that. So there's no, I think the trust is is uh, dwindling quickly with the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah, it's too bad. It's too now, bad. my last disappointment is uh, in Tyron Lou, head coach of the LA Clippers. Now, I'm not disappointed in the Clippers per se. I'm disappointed in Ty Lue's lack of ability to make adjustments. And, you know, this is something that we we both talked about yeah. in years past. Like, oh, man, though, he could make in-game adjustments. He's able to do so many things with the lineup. But here he is with the deepest team, allegedly, in the NBA. And the Clippers look horrible. And I'm disappointed in the way he has not controlled the narrative surrounding the team. In fact, when he's interviewed, it's like he gives them fuel. He gives the media fuel. His job should be to protect the team and to kind of – Control what gets out. He can't be a part of putting out the negative information. Mm -hmm. And I think he's taking low management way too far. Now guys don't even want to play. You know, look at his rotation. Remember how Reggie Jackson was just like, oh, oh skipping man. down the court. Yeah, Reggie is now your third string point guard. And it's probably a direct reflection of um, John Wall coming into the lineup. Now you got Terrence Mann starting. What happened to Reggie? Reggie was your guy when PG and Kawhi were out. were out. Now all of a sudden you just throw him to the back of the bench and you don't trust in him anymore. You don't play him any minutes anymore. What has happened to the Los Angeles Clippers? So I yeah. have to point the finger at Ty Lue. Now, granted, the injuries and all that with PG and Kawhi, we know that, right? We've mm -hmm. been dealing with that for several seasons. Yeah. But Ty Lue has got to get his team on one accord so that they can feel happy to play basketball and to show up at practice and have it reflect in basketball games. Because what we're seeing right now is, is just, it's a travesty. Mm, that's a good one. I can support that. That's a good one. You know what? Speaking of disappointments, I'm going to have to say the low management is a little bit much this season. And I understand the injury piece of it, but it's just I'm going to sit my players. I know that the Warriors were notorious for this at the top of the season where they set out half their players because they just, you know, wanted them to rest. It's this rest piece, not injury management. The resting is where I'm kind of like, y'all, you, you, your, your core players. You mean to tell me that the Miami Heat whole starting lineup didn't play when they were in New Mexico, just didn't even play, just didn't, didn't, even. didn't even play. Yeah, yeah. That is what I'm talking about. So that is a disappointment for me. Players getting injured, I get. Especially now mid-season, you know, these ticky-tack injuries and you want to preserve them and make them ready for the end of the season, I get that. But when you just say, you know, we're resting and they're not really injured, injured, you know, but we're resting them. We're talking about resting top – scorers, top players, stars on the team for games that really, you know, teams that people can come out for nationally televised games. Yeah. Like what? So I just think that the league needs to get a handle on what this rest management looks like, right? Because it's giving low management a negative name when really it should be injury management because you are dinged up or that's it. But this rest stuff, Nah, I'm, I'm, I don't like it. I don't like yeah. the rest piece of it. 
So yeah, yeah, that's a disappointment for me. And that's for all teams that are involved in that. I don't like it. I don't rest like on it. their off days. What? Why do they need additional days of rest? Not granted, rest. they're athletes, but like the rest of America and the rest of the world, you rest on your off days. You don't get while, to rest. While they are getting massages, while mm -hmm. they have a special meal plan. I'm not saying that they should not get their rest, but they don't play all back to back. There are days in between. And yes, playing basketball is a strenuous sport. It does require a lot from your body, but they get a lot of pay as well. So there has to be some type of balance, right, um, where the fans can still see uh, players play these games that we are anticipating them playing in. So, yeah, and not injury management. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. If you're injured, sit out, get well. But if you're resting, that's a different story for me. I don't, mm -mm. Nope, you rest on your off days, I agree.